What's up guys? Welcome back to the Poker Vlog. This is going to be episode number 41, I believe. Just walking into the win. Rare that I get to play on a Saturday night. I'm off work tonight, so we're hitting the strip. It looks busy. I'm dressed the part. Looking like a tourist tonight. Um, let's see if we can continue to play solid the whole night. Not make any bonehead plays like those pocket tens and that Royal Flush Draw from last session I'm still thinking about. So uh, let's get in there and get to the hands. We start with $1,500. That's the max in the win 2-5 game. Shortly after we sit, we are in the small blind and look down at pocket tens. We see a limp from under the gun. Next player raises it to 20. Action folds to me. I go ahead and make the call, and the under the gun limper makes the call. We're going three ways to a flop. Queen 3-5 with a couple of clubs. Pretty good flop. Only one over card. I go ahead and check. Uh, checks to the original raiser who bets $35. I can't fold just yet. I make the call and the next player folds. Heads up to a king of spades on the turn. I go ahead and check and he bets 75 this time. Of course we knew a bet was coming with this turn card. This is gonna favor him much more than me. And I know that, I think he knows that, but I'm new to the table. We don't beat many of his hands right now. Of course he could be firing with nines, eights, or sevens, something like that. He's gonna be betting this turn card, but um, I think we can pick a better spot to put some more money in. So I go ahead and lay this one down. All right, our next hand is upgraded in a big way. Pocket Kings, we are under the gun. I open for $15. We get calls from middle position player and the big blind. We go three ways to a decent flop, eight, seven, four with two clubs. First player checks it to me. I decide to check it. I could bet for protection, but I've been working on keeping these pots a little bit smaller with this type of board texture since there's not gonna be many runouts that are good for us. We could already be drawing dead. There's a lot of two pairs, sets, any nine, five, six, it's all gonna be bad cards. So I go ahead and check this one and the player in position checks as well. So that's good news. We go three ways to a queen of spades on the turn. Uh, big blind checks. Now I think we got the green light to start building a pot. I go ahead and bet $35, hoping one of these guys hit a queen. Next player makes the call and the big blind folds. River brings a deuce of clubs, so it completes the front door flush. I'm not really worried about it. I feel like the guy turned a queen. Maybe he turned spades as well, but I think I gotta go for some value. We got a pretty good run out, so I bet $80 here on the river. He goes into the tank for a little bit and tosses out the call. I show the kings and we are good. Right after this hand, a player complained about me vlogging to a supervisor. She gave the thumbs up that I was good to record. Then he goes to another supervisor, complains to him. He pulls me aside, says I need to table change since we had a complaint. So I moved tables and then I was a little irritated. Didn't really want to continue because I don't want to table change all night with a complaint. So we bounced from the win and went over to Mandalay Bay, saw the 2-5 list growing. So let's get started over here. Honestly, kind of glad it happened. The games looked miserable at the win tonight. This game looks like it's gonna be much better. Let's get started. Max buying 1500 at Mandalay Bay. First playable hand, 9-10 suited. Under the gun raises to $15. Next player calls, so that brings me in. I make the call. We get three more callers. So we're going six ways to a flop, which brings king, nine, five, rainbow, one spade. Uh, first player checks. Next player bets 25. I go ahead and make the call. We get three more callers. So we go five ways to a very nice turn card, the six of spades. So we pick up a flush draw to go along with our middle pair now. First player checks. Next player continues with a tiny bet, 50 bucks. Pot's a little over 200. I feel the urge to raise right now, but I'm not gonna do it. Just like last time with that queen 10 of hearts, we're getting a really good price. Just take the good price. You know, we're multi-way. I'd hate to raise here and get shoved on. So I just call the 50. Next player calls. Uh, original razor gets out of the way. So three ways to a three of spades on the river. What do you know? The back door flush comes in one time. We always talk about back doors, but they don't come in very often. So it doesn't stop my opponent though. He fires out a bet of $75. I don't know what he's got or how much he can pay off, but I go ahead and make it 250 and he makes the call. We show the goods and we take it down. A big pot to start off here at Mandalay Bay. Next, we get a few spades, but the hand is upgraded. Ace, king, suited from middle position. I go ahead and open to $15. Action folds around to the big blind who makes the call and he's been playing wild. Heads up to a king high flop, king nine eight rainbow, one spade. Checks it over to me. 
I go ahead and bet $25 here. Want to uh, charge his draws and middle pairs, some worse kings. He makes the call. Turn card brings an eight of diamonds pairing the bottom card. He checks. I'm not really worried about it. Shouldn't have many eights here, so I bet 65. And to my surprise, here comes the check raise to $180. I told you he's been playing a little bit wild, probably playing three out of four hands in the first few orbits. Hasn't had to show either, making some check raises. So I go ahead and make the call here. He's going to have to be looked up. River is a pretty nice blank, the five of spades. Backdoor diamonds miss. I thought that was a possibility as well. He could be semi-bluffing on the turn, check raising with a flush draw um, or a straight draw. Six, seven does get there, but uh, he's not deterred. He fires out a bet on the river, $350. As I said on the turn, he's pretty much going to have to be looked up. Need to see what he has. So I go ahead and gather out the call and he shows us the goods. Eight, nine of hearts for a turned full house. So action flop, bad turn card. Didn't put him on many eights there, but like I said, he needed to be looked up and I don't mind it. He had a nice hand, played it well. And there goes all of our profit from the first hand. Next, we look down at ace jack offsuit from the big blind. Two players limp from early position. Cutoff makes it $35. It's the same player from last hand. I told you he's been playing Many hands and aggressively, pretty much opening 75% of the time. So I'm gonna five exit. I make it 175 here out of position. Next two players fold and he makes the call. Here we go, heads up to a flop that brings queen, deuce, deuce. No help, we whiff it completely, but we are the aggressor. We're never checking here after we three bet that big, especially pretty much gonna bet small with all of my hands here, even if I had pocket queens. So I size down a little bit making it $140, and he quickly lets this one go. So we got some of our money right back. Next, we look down at pocket tens in the hijack. One player limps. I raise to 20. Next player who just sat with 500 bucks makes it $50. So a small raise. Action folds around to me, and I go ahead and make the call. We go heads up to a nice flop 7-4 deuce rainbow. I check it to the aggressor and he fires out a pretty good sized bet, 85 bucks. I can't go anywhere just yet, over pair to the board. I make the call, we'll see what he does on the turn. Turn is a complete blank deuce of clubs. I check and he quickly rips it all in for about $375. This is kind of a tough spot because you play this hand, you get the nice board, right? You dodge all the over cards, but now he's still showing aggression putting all the money in so really what do we beat we don't beat any of his value which are jacks or better i don't think this guy's just blasting away with ace king here he bought in for 500 he's a little bit on the tighter side three bet me pre-flop looks like he's jamming for protection here so i tank for a little bit decide to make a discipline lay down we can pick a better spot to put 500 dollars in so i go ahead and let this one go and uh he takes it down Next, we look down at two kings again from under the gun, just like last time. I open for $15, get a call from late position and the big blind. We go three ways to a flop, 10, seven, six with two clubs. First player checks it, I bet 25. Again, just like before, these type of board textures gonna try and keep the pot pretty small. Next player calls and the big blind puts in a min raise to $50. I have no idea what this means from this opponent. I just make the call and the player in late position calls as well. Three ways to a blank deuce of diamonds on the turn. Big blind checks it. And honestly, guys, I didn't know what to do. I kind of didn't take much time before checking. I didn't want to get check raised again um, on a board like this. So I check, she checks behind. We see a blank four of spades on the river. First player checks it again. Now I know we have the green light to go for some value. He probably checked min raise with just a pair of 10. So I bet $125 and action is on the late position player who goes into the tank for about a full minute doing some hollywooding checking her cards before sliding out a raise to three hundred dollars kind of annoying action folds to me i think i butchered this hand missed a bet on the turn um but she can't really have anything right except five eight or nothing i don't think she can check sets or straights on the turn and is she going to go for value with some small two pair so I feel like it's either 5-8 or nothing. I think she probably has it, but um, I just folded the 10s. I can't keep folding big hands, even though I think I'm behind, but I make the call and she does indeed have 5-8 offsuit for the winner. I think it was her favorite hand or something. So I pay her off and uh, we lose another big one. Next, it's my button straddle. I have $10 on the button with 10 deuce of diamonds. 
we see a limp from the small blind. Action starts in the small blind here um, at Mandalay Bay when you straddle on the button. Small blind, limps for 10. Under the gun makes it 30. Same player from last hand with the 5-8. One player calls. You guys know me. I'm defending my straddle. It's suited. I call and small blind calls. We go four ways to a flop. King, 10, deuce. So we have a very disguised bottom two pair. We might be getting ourselves into trouble here. Small blind decides to lead right out for 40 bucks. Next player, the original Razor, takes it up to $170. Next player folds and actions on me. No matter what I do here, it's going to look super strong. This is what happens when you play some garbage hands. You get put in tough situations, but I think we have the best hand. Of course, we don't block three kings, but we block the other sets. I go ahead and elect to just flat here because I think if I cold three bet, it's going to force her off like ace king, king queen, even pocket aces. She's going to put me on some sort of two pair or a set. So I just flat looking for a blank, hoping she can fire the turn. We get a nine of clubs and she checks this one. No more slow playing now. I think the nine is a safe turn card. She's not going to have queen jack hardly ever. Um, I think she's going to be heavy with aces, ace king, maybe king queen. So I gather out a bet of $325 here and slide that out. She goes into the tank for a while. I think alarm bells went off in her head immediately when I cult called the 170. Unfortunately, we didn't get a good enough blank for her to fire on the turn, and she ends up letting this go. I'm fine with it. Getting some chips back with the old tin deuce. Next, we look down at 710 of clubs. I'm under the gun and decide to open for $15. Next player calls, and the button makes the call. We go three ways to a flop, ace, jack, three, rainbow, one club. Not much going here. We have some backdoor stuff. That's about it. I go ahead and check, and both of my opponents check. Turn brings an eight of hearts. Pick up a gut shot now. I go ahead and take the lead, size it up, and bet $50, expecting maybe a fold from one opponent, but both of my opponents make the call. River is a blank, jack of spades, flush draws miss, straight draws miss. This might be a little reckless to fire here. One opponent could easily have a jack. I felt like one of them was on a draw for sure. The other I wasn't really sure about, but 10 high is not going to win us this pot. So I fire out a large bet, $225 here on the river. Next player folds. That basically puts the button all in and he makes the lay down as well. So pick up a nice little pot with 10 high. Next, we pick up Pocket Kings for the third time of the night. I open for $20. I'm in middle position. We get a call from the next player and the button and the big blind. So four ways to a flop, 10, 7, 4, rainbow. Looks like a pretty safe flop. Uh, first player checks. I bet 65, and I don't really like the sizing. I think I should just keep it smaller, uh, multi-way like this. Um, next player calls 65 and the button calls 65, so I don't even like it already. We go three ways to a queen of clubs on the turn. Not a great card, not a terrible card. Um, queen 10 gets there now, but actions on me. I decide to bet $150. Not really sure what worse hand's going to call me, but the next player calls, and now I'm pretty much done with it. He's got to have a pretty strong hand to be calling with another player behind with that size bet as well, multi-way, so pretty much over it. The river brings a nine of clubs, not a good card. Backdoor stuff gets there. I check it, and he checks back pocket sevens for a set, and the winner, not really a good run out for either of us there, and we lose another big pot with pocket kings. Next, we're going back in time. Look at the timestamp. This was Saturday when the clocks rolled back, so we get a bonus hour to play. So we're back to 1.29 a.m., I pick up pocket eights in middle position and I race to 20. We get calls from the small blind and the big blind. We go three ways to an unbelievable flop. King eight, five with two hearts. Finally nails set tonight. Action checks to me. I keep it small with a bet of $25. Small blind folds and the big blind comes with a check raise. Small though, he makes it $55. I think he's gonna have just a lot of kings here. Just trying to find out where he's at. I just make the call and we go heads up to a turn, which is not great. Brings a jack of hearts, completes the flush, but not really worried about it. It's just more of an action killer. He fires out an $80 bet. Of course, he could have check raised with a flush draw, but we're not going anywhere. I make the call and the river is a queen of spades. It takes a little time in the tank before checking. I think we got a clear green light to go for some value against his king. So I find a small bet of $115. Goes into the tank for a little bit before laying down King 10 and has a little commentary. Not a great run out. 
for our hero with King Tang. Next, I straddle for $10 under the gun and pick up Ace-10 offsuit. The first player, I was paying attention, he said he was going to blind raise and he makes it $30. He definitely did not look. Next player calls 30 and then the next player calls 30 So we got some dead money in there. We've got about 100 bucks out there. So when action folds to me, I'm going to put him to the test. The blind raiser only has about 250 The next player after him had about 350 So I'm just going to see if they want to play for all of it. I go ahead and toss out 250 uh, the blind razor folds. The next player is pretty hammered, but he says, ah, let's just get it all in. So I go ahead and make the call and let's see what he has. Let's see, Ben. What are we cheering for? Uh, flip for the blog? Yeah, flip for the blog. Flip for the blog? All right, so a big pot here with ace 10. Flop comes deuce, deuce three, and my opponent rolls over two fives. We were in a coin flip situation. Gotta love the action at Mandalay Bay. The turn is a five of diamonds though, ending the hand. He turns a full house, we're drawing dead. So we lose a big one there. If that one goes our way though, I think that would have put us to even, but instead we're back down about $700. Next, we look down at a very nice 10 jack suited. Under the gun player just opens for $30. He's a player I want to be involved with. I'm not folding 10 jack ever, but early aggression, don't really want to three bet him either. So I just make the call. We're both pretty deep and uh, the big blind folds. So we go heads up to a very nice flop, eight, six deuce with two diamonds. So we have a couple overs and a flush draw. I go ahead and check and he checks this one back. Turn improves our hand with a jack of spades, giving us top pair. We got the board pretty well locked up. I take the lead and bet $40 and he makes the call. I'm wondering what he can have right now. Maybe he had a jack as well. Maybe he's just calling with overs, not really sure. The river is the best card in the deck, the ace of diamonds. So now our flush gets there, only two bigger flushes to worry about, but I think he's gonna bet the flop with king or queen high diamonds. Maybe he just has ace king, maybe ace jack, that's possible. He had to have something to call with on the turn, right? So I go ahead and size up in a big way here on the river. Um, I haven't really had to show down any of these big bets and now I actually have it. So I fire out a large bet of $225. He goes into the tank for a while, grabbing like calling chips. Then he grabs some raising chips, putting on a pretty good performance before accidentally or purposefully tossing out $375, which is going to be enough for a min raise. I didn't really take a t second to think about re-raising because it's such a massive polarizing bet that now I just hope I'm good. Of course he could have king or queen x of diamonds and we're no good, but I make the call and we see the good news that he just has ace king. So pick up a massive pot there and that one almost puts us back to even. Like and subscribe. <laughs> Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. You guys heard him, appreciate that. Hit that like and subscribe if you're enjoying the video. This takes us to the last hand of the night. I am in the under the gun straddle with pocket eights. Uh, button limps, big blind limps. I take it up to $50. Only get called by the button who is deep, probably over 17, 1800. We go heads up to a flop, ace, jack, seven. Doesn't appear to be a good flop, but he shouldn't have many aces limping the button. Um, so I go ahead and bet $75 and he makes the call. Turn is a blank, deuce of hearts. I go ahead and check this one just like I would with a monster. It's a blank. I want to see if he's going to take the bait and fire a bet. And he does. He bets $85. I didn't make this check on the turn to give up to a bet. I was actually setting up a big check raise here because remember pre-flop, right? He limped the button, which he's never going to do with aces or jacks. Um, ace jack he's never going to have those hands so i think it's likely that he has a draw a diamond draw he could have a weak ace or a weak jack but we can definitely fold those hands out with a big raise so i take it up to 360 dollars he goes into the tank for a long time and he has some commentary again bro i got the nut flush draw and a straight draw to gamble well, I mean. or not to gamble Ah, that's silly, right? It'll probably be silly. Yeah, I mean, I I would get paid so hard if I hit, but I probably won't hit. Three hundred and sixty into eighty. God, that just looks so strong. Kids, an out-of-position raise to this level looks crazy strong. 
I'll, I'll, when I get up, I'll, I'll run. When, when villain up, has I'll king ten of diamonds, it's a tough call. Yeah, let's see it on it. And yeah. maybe the right move. Oh fuck! I just, I'm on so much. So there is no reason that I should. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's just that's that's just a fold. That's just a fold. I wish we could run the rad. We can't, right? Great. That's a great raise, dude. It's a great raise. Thought you guys would enjoy the thought process there from my opponent. Those guys were really fun. They said they were going to subscribe to the channel, so I went ahead and showed this one. Put him in a tough spot there, you know, with a big draw. And um, really happy about that play when you take it back to preflop. What happened? Who's more likely to have the monster there? It's me. Like he said, that play looks super strong. Even if he had a weak ace or some sort of jack, he's going to fold for sure. So I really like the play there with pocket eights. Um, and that's going to wrap this one up, guys. I did play one more hand. It was the bomb pot, the last hand of the night. And I picked up pocket aces and lost 400. So pretty annoyed with that one because I think we got a little bit winner. But overall, on the night, we lost 475 in this game. And we won 50 bucks at the win. So we lost four and a quarter somehow in this night. But uh, it was a great time. Got a lot of good hands and uh, had some fun. So... We'll catch you at the end of the video. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up episode number 41. Hope you enjoyed all the hands. If you did, you know what to do. Like and subscribe, all that good stuff. Really appreciate it. As always, here are the stats after every session. The No Limit Hold'em stats. We just hit one year of poker vlogging. So, hey, at least we got a little profit. Almost 11000 bucks. Not a bad little side gig. Not that many hours as I thought I was going to get in my first year. My goal was 25000 in the first year, but... I didn't get as many hours as I thought I'd be able to with work um, and everything. So we only got about not even two full months of work. And if you look at hours from what normal people work, 40 hour work weeks. Um, so I'm happy with that. What a weird session, roller coaster. All my big hands lost and then all my bluffs got through. Did make a couple other hands, but like I lost two big pots with kings, one with aces, the last bomb pot, which I could have avoided completely. And then uh, the big flip with Ace-10, and if just one of those goes our way, you know, we have a profit on the night. But, uh, oh well, it is what it is. That was fun. Had some good hands to talk about, some good bluffs. Um, I just need to not be married sometimes. I think I got a little married to the Kings on the one. I knew she was never bluffing with the 5-8. She just, it's such a calmy bet. Could have saved some money there. Um, and then the aces on the bomb pot that you guys didn't see. That was just terrible. I was drawing dead, basically. So, uh, is what it is. Next session is going to be either a very short run from the Aria, a quick sun run at the Aria, uh, or I might get another session in and then just combine it, make it like a two-part two, two part video. But uh, that should be out. If I just do the Aria session, it's going to be a real short one, probably less than 10 minutes, and I might get that done before next Wednesday. If not, the next video will probably be next Wednesday, a uh, two-part video. So, as always, I appreciate all the support. Hope you guys like the new logo. I know it's a little cheesy, but I did a design contest and kind of thought that was funny. I'm, I'm a goofy guy, so I think it's a funny-looking logo. We're going to put that on some shirts and card protectors and stuff and uh, uh, get that going. So... Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, stay to the end for a trick shot. If I have any left in the bank, I haven't been doing any trick shot content, so I might be running out, but uh, I think I'll find something for you. So uh, we'll see you guys next time. Best of luck at the tables. Peace.